Okay, in this video, we are doing part four of a ton of series multiple choice questions. Get ready for the BC calculus exam or just any Calc 2 class. Um, parts one through three exist. Presumably the later parts exist. Uh, they're probably in a playlist somewhere. So let's get started. All right, question 28 of 71. Which of the following series converges? All right, so we just gotta figure out if it converges or whatever's. Um, I look at these and I mean, like my first instinct is just to look through them and find the one that converges. Uh, I look through this and I see D converges, right? It's two over the square root of N. I don't know why they're not simplifying that, but just to confuse you, I guess. It's two over the square root of N, um, but it's alternating. So by the um, alternating series test, that would converge. Let's go through the answer choices and say why the other ones don't converge. So I'm going to look at uh, the nth term, I guess, for pretty much all of these. Keeping in mind that they alternate, but um, if something doesn't have a limit of zero, then when it alternates, it still does not have a limit of zero. So if I take the limit as n approach infinity of one minus n over n, I get negative one, not zero, so that diverges. And then here I would get uh, the limit is one half, which is not to zero, so it diverges. And here I'd get the limit as infinity, so that diverges uh, definitely. And then we already said that uh, D converges by the alternating series test, so that would be our answer. All right, next question. Which of the following statements is true? Okay, so true. Uh, the C A, we have to go through all of them and just find the true one. The series uh, from one to infinity of negative one to the n, one over root n diverges by alternating series test. No, that definitely converges by the alternating series test. At this point, you want to be good at the alternating series test so you can kind of like look and do it. On free response, obviously, you would go through all the steps. Uh, the terms alternate, they decrease in magnitude, they have a limit of zero, therefore by the alternating series test they converge or whatever. But here we just want to look and say. So this converges, so that's out. Um, the series uh, negative one to the n plus one, four root n over uh, two plus root n converges by the alternating series test. Um, if we take the limit as n approaches infinity of that, we get four, which is not zero, so this does not converge at all, never mind by the alternating series test. Uh, honestly, on the like on a multiple choice thing, I would probably skip C and look at D just to see if it's the answer because D definitely converges by the alternating series test and is therefore the answer. But I wanna look at C and see why it doesn't converge by the alternating series test because initially it kind of feels like it should. We have negative one to the n plus one, cosine of n pi over n squared. And then this is claiming that it converges by the alternating series test. So I got to take a closer look at this one. Um, so the, really, it's the cosine of n pi that's potentially screwing it up. So let's just look at cosine of n pi for a couple of values. So if n is 1, we get the cosine of pi, which is negative 1. Then we get the cosine of 2 pi, which is positive 1. Cosine of 3 pi is negative, and then positive, and then negative. Okay, so that's for n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 4 and 4, who writes that? I'm going to hold on. Can I just delete that? At least, there we go. Okay, so now I need to look at negative 1 to the n plus 1. So I'm going to plug in the same values of n. So uh, I will get negative 1 squared and then cubed and then blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that means that when I multiply these, because that's what I'm really doing in the series, I end up with uh, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. It's not even alternating, so it's a trick. Well, I mean, like, they're all kind of trick questions. That's kind of the idea behind testing you. Um, is that, you know, we see if we can trick you. That's not even alternating. And then we already said that D definitely converges by the alternating series test. So that is our answer. All right, let's move on to the next one. Which of the following is not a P-series? This is a great question, right? So we just have to look through and see which one's not a P-series. Uh, here we go. P is four, so yes. P is one. I mean, it's the harmonic series, but the harmonic series is a P-series. Um, 1 over n to the e is insane, but it is a p-series where p is equal to e, e is greater than 1, so it does converge, um, not that that's the question. And then 1 over e to the n is geometric, so that's, like, the, the geometric and p-series are kind of your best friends when you're doing these types of problems, but that's geometric, um, so that's not a p-series. Next up, which of the following is a convergent p-series? Okay. So we just have to look at them and decide, well, B is not even a P-series, um, but it is convergent, which I guess is why it's there to confuse you. Uh, I I would not say that A is a P-series. Uh, it makes me question uh, my definition of a P-series, 
But if that's a p-series, it would be 1 over n to the negative third, which would make p negative 3, which is less than 1. So, I mean, it diverges, I guess, by the p-series test. I don't think that's really a p-series. Um, but either way, it's not convergent, so that's fine. Uh, b is geometric, uh, so obviously it is convergent, but it's geometric. Um, c is p equals 1 half, which is less than 1, so it diverges. And then uh, d is written funny, but it's really 1 over... Uh, n to the 3 halves, so p is 3 halves, which is greater than 1. That is our answer. Good question. We want more of those. All right, which of the following is the harmonic series? This is an even better question. All right, so 1 to 20 is like part of the harmonic series, uh, but it's not the full thing. So this is a partial sum. It's not the harmonic series. That's an approximation of it. By the same, B is not the harmonic series, it's half of the harmonic series, because we are going to infinity, so that's still not the harmonic series. C is the harmonic series, I mean, this is it, that's our answer. Um, and then D is the alternating harmonic series, which I like to think is famously convergent, but is not the harmonic series. But it's useful to know and to think about that every once in a while. All right, next up. Which of the following statements about the series from one to infinity, two to the n, over 3 to the n plus n is true. Okay, I'm going to do the thing that I usually do. 3 to the n dominates as we go to infinity, so I'm just going to cross out the n. Because, um, you know, if we just look at 2 to the n over 3 to the n, we'll be able to figure out what the series is doing. Um, and that means that the series is really basically, not actually, but it's basically 2 to the n over 3 to the n, which is 2 thirds to the n, which is geometric and converges. So now what we want to do is look at the answer choices. Um, diverges by n term test. That's not true because the limit is zero. Um, so we don't have a conclusion that we can make. We would need the limit to not be zero for it to di diverge by that. Um, diverges by comparison to the series one over n. I think they're trying to see if you don't understand what dominant terms are. Maybe. I don't really know. Um, but anyway, I'm pretty convinced this converges. So converges by comparison to the series one over three to the n. Well, that two to the n is going to mess you up there. And also for part D, we already know that it is this. So just be aware that the numerator and the denominator are contributing there. It's not just one or the other. And let's move on to the next. Which of the following series can be used with a limit comparison test to determine whether the series uh, 4 to the n over 5 to the n minus n squared converges or diverges? This is like the exact same question. This is why you want to do a lot of practice problems going into the AP exam. You basically will have done every problem possible and you know, you'll look at them and be like, I already know the answer. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing, right? Five to the end still crushes n squared as we go to infinity. So I'm just gonna cancel it. Um, and that means that my series is basically four to the n over five to the n. So it's basically four fifths to the n. So I would want to limit compare to D, four fifths to the n. Um, but, so like, they're doing the same thing here. Like A, I don't know, do you not understand dominant terms? B, B, I'm not sure why you would think you could compare it to that. I guess because the four to the n's would cancel. I don't know, don't do that. Um, C is where like, did you ignore the numerator and then D is the right answer. If you want to see the work, we would do the ratio test. Uh, and it's like crazy. Um, Actually, why, why would I do the ratio test when I'm supposed to limit compare? I don't know. I decided to do the ratio test on this. Uh, and, and you end up like it's a lot of work. And that was wrong. But one thing I thought was interesting at the end of the ratio test is you just get four fifths. You get like the ratio of the geometric series um, that you should be limit comparing it to. So I don't know what I was even doing there. I think I just forgot what the question said. At the end, I should have done the ratio test. No, the limit. Ah, no. I should have done the limit comparison test just to like prove that it worked, but instead ratio test because left to my own devices, I will ratio test anything. All right. Which of the following statements about the series uh, n equals one to infinity sine of one over n is true. So this one might throw you for a loop because I feel like this has been de-emphasized over the years. This actually used to be a really common type of question. So like I would spend time talking about it and, and looking at these types of problems doesn't come up very much anymore. Um, but in general, here's like the premise and then uh, we'll see why and then I'll like make a statement. Uh, if you have the sum from one to infinity of the trig function, the trig of a function, so like sine of a function, cosine of a function, I guess tan of a function, 
you don't really see secant that often. Also, always consider the nth term test uh, for divergence, because like secant and cosine, uh, you might get a limit of one. Uh, but anyway, if you have trig of a function, you should try to limit compare it to the sum of just the function, right? So here it's the sine of one over n. I'm gonna try to limit compare this to just one over n. And it's like always gonna work. Um, provided the nth term test didn't already tell you that the thing diverges. So here I would get the limit is n approaches infinity, sine of one over n over one over n. Uh, so this actually, if you uh, take the limit, you get zero over zero, so it's L'Hopital's. If I use L'Hopital's, I get cosine of one over n, and then the chain rule gives me negative one over n squared, and then divided by the derivative of the denominator, because the denominator is the function that's inside the trig function, is exactly the same as the thing the chain rule gave you, so they will cancel, and we just get cosine of one over n. That, if we go to infinity, is cosine of zero, which is one, so that will happen like all the time. So you basically end up with like a L'Hopital situation where the chain rule is gonna cancel, it works out for you. So that's a thing, like keep that in the back of your mind. It's not very common anymore. It might come up and if you're looking for like a perfect score, you're gonna have to know those kinds of things. Um, so this series will diverge by limit comparison to one over N. I mean, I guess they're basically giving you the stuff. So even if you didn't know that, you would just start applying all the things that they're saying, like one over N comes up twice. So you have to limit compare it basically at that point. Um, okay. so. That's what I would do there. It's like, you know, an oddball question. Number 36, and the final question in this video, which of the following series is conditionally convergent? So conditionally convergent means uh, if you take the absolute value of the nth term, you do not get a convergent series, but when it alternates, you do get a convergent series. So we just need to think about that. All right, so the first one, if I took the absolute value of that term, I'd get five over k cubed, basically, let's say. That's a convergent p-series, which means this converges absolutely. N is not the answer, because we're looking for conditional. All right, for b, uh, if I take the absolute value, I get 5 over k, which is harmonic and diverges. But if I leave the negative 1 to the k, uh, it alternates. The terms decrease. They have limit 0. Converges by the alternating series test. It is conditionally convergent. This is our answer. Let's look at the other ones anyway. If we take... Uh, for this one, this one, uh, if you just take the limit to infinity, you get 5k over k plus 1. That gives you 5, which is not 0. So this will diverge um, while alternating and while uh, it's just divergent. Like, you know, it doesn't matter. And then uh, the same thing actually is true for the next one where we actually get infinity as our limit. Remember, I'm ignoring the negative 1 because if you don't get 0 as your limit, then you're just getting like negative one to the k times not zero, which is still not zero. So that's it. That's this whole video. I will be back in the next one to do more. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.